So the Shri Bhagavad is still in Vrindavan, um, staying with his, his disciples. Dr. Yogi Raj Dev Swaru teaches yoga at the University of Copenhagen and has recently obtained an Indian government grant to begin a yoga institute in New Delhi. He wrote a letter expressing his appreciation of Shri Bhagavad's work and asking how he can help the mission. Bhagavad replied, I thank you very much for your kind appreciation. Because you are a teacher in a respectable university, I request you to study some of my books, especially Bhagavad Gita, as it is. As stated in the Gita, Mana Sam Yamya Matchito Yukta Asi Kamatpadaha. One should meditate upon me, Krishna, within the heart and make me the ultimate goal of life. Bhagavad Gita 6.13-14 Western people are now becoming more and more interested in yoga practice, but unfortunately, because they have no authorized source of information, they are being misled by unauthorized teachers and concocted methods of yoga practice. Actually, the Sangha Yoga system practiced thousands of years ago is not practical for this age. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced the chanting of the holy name of God. <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. In all our temples, we're doing that, and we have more than 40 big volumes of authorized books Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, etc. And intelligent people are accepting this movement all over the world. So if you are serious about joining this mission, then why not study these books, understand the philosophy and teach? Despite, despite his workload, Prabhupada always adheres to his schedule. At 11.30 a.m. he took his massage followed by a bath and lunch, and then an hour's rest. I've never seen anyone sleep as little as Srila Prabhupada, about three or four hours total, yet he never shows any sign of fatigue. When he woke around 4 p.m., Kishore Dasi placed a freshly made garland around his neck, dabbed some freshly ground sandalwood paste on his forehead, and temples and offered him some fresh fruit juice. He then sat at his desk to receive visitors. At 5 p.m. his doors opened for darshan. A steady flow of curious and respectful people, 50 or 60 at a time, continuously packed his room either to sit and watch or to ask questions. <clears throat> He sometimes talked specifically. He sometimes talked specifically, 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 with a particular visitor, not minding, minding if the other fifty listened in. And at other times, he spoke generally to all. I was posted at the door to give out pera or milk sweet. That is a Vandavan speciality. Prabhupada is particularly insisting, no, Sri Prabhupada is, is uh, particularly insistent that all visitors receive some Krishna Prasad, a tangible offering for their spiritual advancement. A discussion of philosophy may be easy, easily forgotten, but Prasad will always act to purify. Prasad distribution is also in accordance with Vedic etiquette that the guest might always be offered a plate to sit <coughs> and a little refreshment, no matter who he may be. 
Thus, as always, Sri Dhamma was the perfect host. Just as we heard here, uh, Ravana and Vishwarupa, uh, yes, must always be offered, and say, no matter who he may be. You know, there's a saying that, you know, when you receive a guest, you should treat him so nicely. Even though he is the biggest enemy you have, you should treat him so nicely he practically forgets that he is in the house of his enemy. <laughs> you know, Baba also said, you know, if, and just. Now, if you're very poor and you don't have no, that don't have many facilities or many, I say, I say uh, special things to offer to the guest, you know, it says that at least you should offer an, uh, I say, uh, a mat, you know, straw mat to sit on, and a glass of water. Hare <laughs> Krishna. You know, so Sri Abhav was like always making sure that everyone who came to the temple took some prasad. That's why we also so insistent, you know, like these two guests that they came this morning, they just came in, were surprised to see all this. You know. It's like always the Indians when they come, they're surprised, wow, such a, such a thing in the West. These are all, you know, I mean, this is Mechaland, Mechaland you know, and Yavana land. <laughs> and people are not accustomed to Vedic culture, they're used to take alcohol and eat meat and all this stuff. You know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they came into a come into a temple like that. And many times we see also that when they come the first time and they start talking with the devotees are surprised, you know, about the knowledge that the devotees have, their, their, their purity, you know, and uh, their qualities, and they're very surprised that we're following the four regulated principles. Wow. If you tell somebody in Germany about following the four great uh, Regulated principles, they just says, what? No, that, 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 what is that? No? That's not part of our culture, practically. No? No. But when you speak to Indians, if you tell them, yeah, we're vegetarians, and we don't take alcohol, and we don't smoke, and all this stuff, no, they become very respectful, because they know, deep in their heart, this is part of the Vedic culture. No? This is culture. And they know that they actually should do that. And many times when, when we speak to them, uh, no, then they say, oh yes, my grandmother was also a great saint, no? or the grandfather, or, <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> that's where they come from, that's why Sri Prabhupada used to always emphasize that, uh, uh, no, you're born in India, it's a pious birth. Uh, no. It's that because you have been pious in, in lives before, that's why you are allowed to take birth in India. Why in India? Boys in India, no, India is supposed to have more culture still. No, sometimes Father used to say, you should travel to India, you go to India, to learn culture. Uh, yes, that's it. Now, you also coming from uh, uh, Nepal. Nepal no? That's also Vedic, part of the Vedic culture. No? Uh, no? Yes. They had a king before, but he did some weird things. So they took him off, no? but normally the kings were also taking care, making sure that you know, people were following their culture properly, like that. You know. Anyway, so there's many holy places also in Nepal. Uh, you know, that's why you know, we have a temple in Kathmandu. Like that. In Kathmandu, you know, there's uh, Mahavishnu Swami was there for many, many years. I remember many years he used to travel all over the world and always collect for the temple in Kathmandu. <laughs> you know, he always said, give me a donation for our temple in Kathmandu, in Nepal. Yeah. Anyway, so. <clears throat> so Prabhupada no, is always giving the example. You know, that's what Acharya means. You know, and we should also you know, follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada, given, given an example. You know. That's why I sometimes mention something, like I mentioned something to you the last Sunday also. No, it's not so much, not much because of you, but it's because you are looked up at, you know, you are respected. You come from, you know, from, from, from Nepal, you probably have also family that are, who are devotees, no? Your father, you told me your father is also a devotee or something like that. No, no. Anyway, no. so, we should always, you know, follow in the footsteps of Shri Prabhupada, we should always give an example. 
When new people come, they bring a dog, and they, you know, they talk to the devotees like that. Uh, you know, the devotees have to be example. They have to teach. They teach. Whatever, like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, whatever great man does, common man will follow. That's very important. Yeah. Anyway, so we have we are fortunate to to have Sri Prabhupada come to the West and teach us what is culture. Yeah, he didn't just come like many Prabhupada mentions here. Yeah. <coughs> and they, to the the letter to the to the Indian professor. You know, he said that nowadays uh, they they teaching yoga, but it's not really yoga. You know, they have no idea what yoga actually is. Uh, you know, this power mentions here, Ashtanga Yoga, which was practiced many, many years ago. You know, Ashtanga Yoga was supposed to be Krita Yoga, but Satya Yoga. <coughs> anyway, so, uh, no, you know, he's inviting him to help. You know, and what is his advice? You know, very interesting. Power told him, read Bhagavad Gita, read our Bhagavad Gita. Read Bhagavad Gita as it is, you know, not Bhagavad Gita as I think it is, or as I speculate, that kind of, you know, Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, you know, and then Bhagavad says, you know, when you read Bhagavad Gita, you, know, you develop more faith. That's the process. You know, unless you're, you're faithful, you're not become a devotee. You're not, you're not engaged in devotional service. Uh, you know, and how, you know, what is the process of developing faith? Especially nowadays, especially reading Srila Prabhupada's books. You know, and it's so sad with the devotees. But basically, reading the books is the most important thing. Uh, you know, you know, we see, you know, sometimes when people come the first time to the temple, uh, you know, and they have already received the book, or they have read some books, their, their, kind of, their questions are completely different. To the people who come the first time for Okay, well, they, they know nothing, and they just happen to walk here and invite you to do the temple. You know, they normally ask questions like, why do you paint your nose? You know? <laughs> and where do you get your money from? You know, that's a very important question. <laughs> no. And whereas on the, sun, on the Sunday feast, sometimes huh, somebody asks them, or even though for the first time there, or not haven't been around very much, so uh, they start asking questions. Do you really believe in reincarnation? And uh, why? You know, you know, they have a completely different basis uh, you know, when that comes. You know, that's why Power would emphasize so much of the solution of the books. You know, teaching. You know, teaching. Yeah. Any questions? Or shall we continue reading a little bit more? Huh? What do you say? What shall you say? No, I'm missing one. When he walked around 4 p.m., that's how much of it is, Kishori Devi, that's it. I was posted at the door to give out myself. At 6.30 p.m., the temple conch and bells announced evening arti. Darshan concluded and Srila Prabhupada sent the devotees and guests over to the temple to chant and see the deities. Relaxing for a while, he spent the rest of the evening discussing philosophy and matters of practical management, giving advice to his managers and sometimes sitting quietly chanting. A local devotee, Sri Vishwam, uh, Sri Vishwambara Dayal, popularly known as Bhagachiti, arrived at 9 p.m. to prepare Sri Prabhupada's hot milk and hold light dis a light discussion on the temple management, Gurukula and other matters. Sri Prabhupada drinks a glass of hot milk every evening just before taking rest, sometimes supplementing it with uh, supplementing it with savouries like kishori, paratha or fried chile. He gave the cooks clear instructions how to make each preparation. This milk has to be exactly the right temperature, very hot, so that it can be easily digested, but not so hot 
در برس پس آشنا فرمه One previous evening he demonstrated to me how to bring boiling milk to the right temperature for drinking. Calling for another bowl, he poured the milk from his silver cup from a height from a height of about six inches into the bowl, and then back again a few times to uh, aerate the milk and reduce the temperature. When it was just right, he drank it. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Everything that Parvati did was not exactly teaching us. And I heard also when you when you do that, you know, when you get the milk, the hot milk, you should pour it you know, into a glass. And uh, I was giving examples here, pouring it back and forth you know, to come to the right temperature. I heard once that also this is also very good. So air, you know, the I say, the, the butter, you know, the air goes into the milk also. Yeah, that's this. Uh, this uh, custom of drinking milk at night, actually this was done in all the temples at the beginning. I don't know how long it lasted, but this was something that was done in, in every temple. And, and not only that, but also we used to read from the Krishna book, drinking the milk. That was, it was a tradition at that time. Yeah, yeah just like how yeah, I used to tell us that in, in, in India, in India you know, maybe not so much in the cities nowadays, but more fur, further away from the cities and the small places, villages and that, there was a custom that people would unite at night and hear from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And that's why everyone got to know the contents of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Uh, just like, you no, know, often when we start talking about Ram or something like that, you know, our Indian guests have so many details, I know. They mostly know much more details than we do. <laughs> yeah. Where from? Because they heard. Yeah, just like the, the other day I was, you know, uh, when I was giving class, I, at, the, at the end I was asking how, you know, what everyone was reading, you know what kind of book they were reading. And there was an older lady, an Indian lady was sitting on the chair. So first I hesitated to ask her what she was reading, you know, out of respect. <laughs> but then as I heard all the commentaries of the devotees, I also asked her, you know, she said, Ramayana. <laughs> When the devotees assured him that the problem would be fixed immediately, Prabhupada smoothed us all. Ah. Prabhupada called Sudap Das, the Dutch devotee, an architect who was responsible for supervising the construction and design of the project. But he could not be found. This only increased Prabhupada's exasperation, holding Sudap responsible for the mistake. He sharply rebuked him in his absence. So I forgot to read something else. Huh? One after another, no? this is for him. Uh, one after another, Gopal Krishna, Akshayananda, uh, Gunarnava, and Dhananjaya were called. No one seemed to want to take responsibility. Shri Prabhupada demanded to know why. Whenever they offered a feasible excuse or explanation, he abruptly cut them off. It was clear he wanted to hear a plan for rectifying the mistakes, not excuses. Now this is one point that we also learned from Shri Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was not satisfied even when, when somebody made a mistake uh, you know, and the person came and asked for forgiveness or like that. Prabhupada was not satisfied unless the person corrected the situation. You know, because it's easy to say, I'm sorry, uh, no, I did something, oh, no, no, no. You know, that's, that's more easy. You know? 
But Bhagavan well, always expect that if you go and correct the situation. So in Surab, hmm? Surab was from Holland. There were three, as far as I remember, there were three brothers who became devotees. Uh, I don't remember the names. But Surab was an architect. Then Parvati occupied him in that. And he was very, very inspired. You know, and that gets mentioned here that he, he was one of the designers and supervisors of the temple in Bandhava, Krishna Balaram. And not only that, in other places can be also, he also had other projects. <coughs> and uh, I think it was last year or a little longer, we got the notice that Surab also gave up his body. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so Prabhupada's disciples are becoming rarer and rarer. <laughs> When the devotees assured him that the problem would be fixed immediately, Prabhupada's mood changed. See? So Prabhupada heard about the revision and that the, the mistake would be corrected. He sharply rebuked him in his absence. Um, as our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada is, trained us, you know, is training us in every aspect of devotional service. His praise and criticism are never unreasonably, uh, unreasonable or excessive, but are always intended to push us forward in our spiritual progress. He expects us to be consci uh, conscientious as attention to the details of our service is a practical manifestation of our seriousness and sincerity. He doesn't like to hear excuses for task, uh, for task undergone, and he loathes the bureaucratic mentality that in the West we call passing the buck. Passing the buck. I think buck means uh, I'm a, yeah? Yeah. 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 So give it to somebody else. Give the responsibility to somebody else. And that was also something powerful. We also saw in Srila Prabhupada. You know, that uh, you know, when something was going wrong somewhere, that everyone was just like, you know, or waiting for, for somebody else to come and correct the situation. You know, Prabhupada made us all responsible for having seen or tolerated this, seen this mistake, and not doing anything. He told us that British Raj had introduced this mentality and it has crippled India. He is determined to see that, it's not, uh, that it not get footing in ISKCON. I ask you to do something. You ask him. He asks another. And you go away and forget. Business finished. Simply bureaucracy. If I ask you to do something, it is your responsibility, not his. Even if you give it to someone else, you have to see it. It is properly completed, confirmed. <laughs> Despite his criticism of the management over the hot water incident, Prabhupada is very pleased with the service of Saurabh and the other devotees. More than once he had asked me during this, during massage what I thought of the guest house and temple. <coughs> but when I responded with appreciation, he looked over the building and said, Yes, I think he has done very nicely. There is no such building anywhere. But he is determined not to allow but he is determined not to allow us to become complacent. Now the facility has to be maintained and managed efficiently. And Srila Prabhupada is personally showing us how to do it. As the representative of Krishna, he wants to make sure that whatever resources Lord Krishna has provided are used correctly without waste. And he is constantly urging us to develop the same sense of responsibility. <clears throat> that reminds me of something. Uh, 
uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So he's always, uh, Haladas always reading to me. And uh, we, were, we were reading now the last book of uh, Harisawi. Yeah? This, is, this is, you see, Harisawi state, the Siddha uh, to April 1976. Yeah. And then, and then he left Sri Lanka, and Parma gave him the responsibility of GBC for Australia. Uh, and he also you know, <coughs> took sannyas. Uh, you know, so he took up great responsibilities in Australia. And then uh, he came back just, just uh, in 77, uh, you know, like in, in, in October. No? Yeah, October, right? right? He came back to Vandala uh, to continue his service. Uh, we all know that at that, that, uh, at that time, Shara Paul was very, very conditioned, physically conditioned. Uh, and he, at the end, he was always laying on his bed and felt actually very uncomfortable. They had to move him on from this side to that side, and give him a massage there, and this and that. Uh, he hardly ate anything anymore. And uh, 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 there came some, no, you were just reading this, there came some members of the, from the Gaudiya position, God Brothers, you know, from Srila uh, Prabhupada. And Srila uh, 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 was receiving them very nicely, very respectfully. He asked forgiveness for them, for, for, you know, for offenses that they might have committed you know, in this. And he even said, yes, uh, during my preaching, you know, sometimes I was very, very, how you say, stern, how you say, like, you know, very heavy, you know, heavy. So please forgive me uh, you know, for having committed offenses against you. And at the same time, some disciples were sitting there. And the disciples you know, continued speaking with Srila Prabhupada, this problem, that problem, and, uh, you know, and, and the books that were published somewhere else, this and that, so many things. Uh, no. And Paul was uh, very eager to hear from them about uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the activities of his movement all over the world. And there came somebody, he was a sannyasi, also from the Gaudiya Mat. And he, Paul had, had asked him to help uh, no, because uh, he said that his disciples had not much, I said, didn't know very much about, you know, uh, uh, I say, uh, how to do things after his departure and this and that, you know. And uh, so he, he asked him to help in this in this ceremonies after that, you know. So um, uh, then, uh, uh, and Prabhupada continued in the presence of these devotees from the guy. He he heard about the activities and the movement. Even they showed the, they showed Prabhupada photos and he showed them around what was going on all over the world like that. <coughs> And then one of them, Gaudiya senior sannyasi, said, now, just think of Krishna. You're now, you're now at the point you should only think of Krishna, nothing else. Yeah. And the uh, power continues speaking about, oh, you know, Lord, you're opening that temple and how many books were distributed. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a specific mood of Srila Prabhupada. He continued his service up to the very last end, following, like I mentioned many times, at the very end, probably following the instruction of his spiritual master to preach in the English language yeah, in the West. And Prabhupada used to do that, no, up to the very, very end. Now, whereas others have different, no, this was actually Prabhupada's preaching mission, this was his life, no, preaching mission. No, you can easily, you know, uh, yeah, I say, retire and, and, and go to a place where you're not uh, disturbed by any whatever, you know, activities and noise and this and that. Oh, heavy kirtans, heavy metal kirtans like that. <laughs> but Bauer was behind the preaching all the time. He made sure that the preaching movement was continuing, uh, giving the example until the very end. Any questions? A commentary? I don't want to go over to the Shiva Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Thank
Has its work in it. Yes. Translated. Also von mir gesagt, dass Shri ähm, Prabhupada war nur dann erfreut, wenn die Devotees ihre Fehler ähm, berichtet haben. Also verbessert ja. haben. Verbessert ja. haben. Ja. Und? Ja. Kurz, kurz, übersetzen. Das vergisst die Hälfte. Hier gab es steht, dass die Wuti bereut seine Taten, die er in der vergangenen, in dem vergangenen Leben begangen hat. Mhm. Und soweit wir wissen, ist nicht jeder bereit oder in der Lage, den Vorgang des reinen Kindes von Dienstes aufzunehmen. Selbst wenn er weiß, wie er äh, zu verrichten ist. Das ist sehr, sehr, also es ist nicht einfach. Nicht einfach, hier uns von Dienst auszuführen. Deswegen meine Frage ist, wie sollen die Devotees ähm, sich ähm, also benehmen oder wie sollen sie es machen, wenn sie, also damit sie nicht in depressive ähm, Lage versetzt werden und dass sie es noch nicht in der Lage sind, das in vollem Maße mit nach, vollem, nach allen Regeln ausführen zu können. Ich kann es nicht, ich werde es nicht schaffen und so und mit dieser Stimmung halt Das ist eine Frage, die in der Kategorie von How can we? <lacht> Die Devotees, die hier vor Jahren, schon seit vielen Jahren in Deutschland aktiv sind, die kennen diese Kategorie von uh, How can we? This was introduced by Harikesh. So whenever somebody asks, Oh, how can I do that? Oh, he used to say, Chant Hare Krishna, read the books of Srila Prabhupada, attend Mangal Arti, follow the regulated principles, and pay your obeisances, all this. This whole process is there to give us strength. Yes. Or I mentioned that in the beginning, devotees should be act, educated properly on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's books. Mm -hmm. Then in this way, they had association with other devotees. So in this way, the faith uh, 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 grows. The faith grows. Uh, and so when you come into difficulties, because you are conscious, Krishna conscious to a certain degree, you don't give up, and you, you ask for advice from the other devotees, especially from the senior devotees, if you have the opportunity. Is that it? Did I answer your question? No. <laughs> Yeah. Yet, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> why, do, why do you do, do ask the question, just one phrase? What is your problem? Ach so, ja, okay. Ja, okay. Ja, 
от чего оттолкнуться, то есть не сразу же тебе замешать какой-то стандарт. Кодс, кодс. Захиба, кодс. Ja, Chan Hare Krishna. Hier Shimad Bhagavatam. Come to the programs. Be punctual. Not come late for Mangalati. Huh? You know what that means? Krishna is, is ready to give us his audience, you know, his darshan, you know. And we don't take it serious, we come late at any time. That's not the way. You know? We have to be punctual. We have to be there before the curtain goes up. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God and in our cause his mercy. He has manifested here on this altar to give us his darshan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has manifested in the form of the Murti on our, on our Now we think that that's not important. You know, because I can't be there five minutes, but it's, uh, nobody sees. I, I stay in the back, you know. Kind of. <laughs> be punctual. What do you think? What's thanks to? Yeah. Do it properly. That's why Paolo used to say, this is a science, you know. If you don't practice properly, do you, you don't accept the process, how can you expect to advance in Krishna consciousness? That's why we're always here from Lecto Devotion. Yeah? The 64 qualities, uh, activi uh, kind of activities of devotional service. It's so nice. Every day we hear of one quality, or maybe two. Depends on the reader. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because all these points are important. And we better take them very seriously. There's nothing that Prabhupada gives us that are not important. It's all very, very important. Like I always say, every word that Prabhupada says is important. And we should take advantage. I was with a, with a god brother once, many, many years back, and he was at the point of giving up his body. He was very sick. You know, he had hepatitis C. You know. At that time, I don't know, nowadays they have a way to, to how do you say, cure it, I don't know exactly. But at that time, it was, a, was, a, you know, it was unavoidable to give up the body when he had hepatitis C. You know. And so he had left the movement for some time. And uh, we happened to, I, he, I, he went to that city, you know, Montevideo in Uruguay, you know, and we met uh, his son on the street, you know, the Sankirani Bodhis. We met him. And uh, he said, oh, my father's also devotee. Blah, 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 blah. You know, and then uh, 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 we went to see him. You know? He gave her the address and we went to see him. And he was, uh, I say, obviously very, very sick. He had long beard and hair. And then he was living in a hut on the, on the seaside, seaside, on the side of the ocean. You know? And it, the house was very neglected. It was not very, very nicely kept like that. You know? So when we came in, you know, he was surprised. Wow, there was not a single picture of Krishna on the walls. <laughs> so he, when, when we came in, he was surprised. Wow, Maharaj! You know, what is it, you, you know, what is the price that you, you know? And then uh, 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 I told one of my disciples, I told him to chant, Kirtan, to chant the holy names. Uh, and because of this situation, it, it became so intense. The Kirtan was so sweet, so intense, that some of us, you know, they became, a, you know, we, we how do you say, uh, tears, how do you say, uh, you know, yeah, we became very emotional, the whole thing. Yeah. And then at one point he said he, 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 he had to 
how you say, Gorodzone, but he couldn't move properly. So he called his son, and his son helped him. And at that time, he, he wanted everyone to go out and come back after that. No, and I, when, I, when I started going out, he said, No, Maharaj, you stay. You stay. So I stayed with him. No? And then he said something that really, I say, was, was very, I say, very uh, impressive. He said, Maharaj, now I have to give up my body soon. No? And I, I would have liked to do much more for Siddha Prabhupada. I lost so much time not, not serving Siddha Prabhupada. But now it's too late. You know? So anyway, why I'm saying that? Because we should use our time as much as possible in devo for devotional service. You know, just like we heard from the Shasta so many times that everything else that we do you know, has not real any benefit. You know? the, only ben the only thing that is beneficial is when we occupy ourselves in devotional service. We were engaged in Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smadanam, Parasivanam, Ajanam, Mandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atanivedanam. Yeah. These activities you know, constitute devotional service. So we should engage as much as possible in these kind of activities. Yeah. Everything else has no real benefit. Yeah. If it's not connected with Krishna consciousness, it's just a waste of time. Yeah. So take advantage. Now you have come from, from uh, 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 what is the country now? Ukraine. Ukraine, you have come from Ukraine. Uh, there are so many problems on Ukraine. So now you can be peaceful here, you can chant Hare Krishna, you can cook in the kitchen, you can do puja, you can give class, you can do so many things. So take advantage. Yeah. And as I, far as I know, you're, also st you're learning German now. Yeah, very good. I, I, told you, I told you this one. Shri Prabhupada was very, very, I say, uh, insistent. You know, when devotees were in other places where they didn't speak the language, that they didn't learn the language. And I gave the example. Prabhupada told us that when the Christian preachers came to India, you know, they were all instructed by the church to learn the local language, low Hindi, hey, learn Hindi. Uh, and they all did because it was like a, like a, was one of the principles they had to follow. Yeah. That's very nice. So if you learn some German, you can preach in German. And they'll be very impressed because in Germany, you know, uh, 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 people, no, Germans take foreigners more serious than, than local people sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Did I, did, did I uh, say something of importance to your question? No. Huh? Yet? Yeah. Yeah, okay. In Bezug auf was sagst du das? Um, Mehr detailliert. Was, was ist genau der Punkt? Give an example. Zum Beispiel? Zum Beispiel? Zum Beispiel? 
Ale ja też ernst genommen oder spricht ihr jetzt einfach weiter? Er antwortet genau. Nein, okay. <lacht> Zum Beispiel frühes Aufstehen, tägliche, tägliches Besuch vom Tempel, following the four regulated principles, chanting Japa, mindestens 16 Minuten, alle Obwohl sie wissen, dass es so sein soll. Das, hast du, das sind unsere Gelübden. Ja. Habe ich gerade in der Klasse von Parma gehört, gehört wo Parma sagt, das Wichtigste ne, in, in unserem spirituellen Leben ist, dass wir, dass wir folgen. Ne, dass wir das, was wir akzeptieren, befolgen. Wir haben vor, in der Öffentlichkeit vor, in dir, die ist überall, ne, und so vielen wichtigen Personen, haben wir diese Gelübde auch haben wir versprochen, diese, diese Prinzipien zu befolgen. Das ist, das ist äh, eine Frage von Ernsthaftigkeit. Ist das nur, weil ich gesagt habe, dass, dass man pünktlich zum Mangel Ati da, da sein muss? Ja. Was ist das Problem? Was ist das Problem? Ja, die sollten wir ermutigen. Den sollten wir helfen. Wenn die Probleme haben. Oder? Das ist der Wert der Sadhu Sangha. Der Gemeinschaft mit den Weißen haben. Oder? Wolltest du noch was dazu kommentieren? Ich habe das, glaube ich, nicht ganz verstanden. Hast du übersetzt? Mhm. Wie findest du das? Ja. 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 Oder nicht? Ja, yeah, oder? Ja, yeah, ja. Bitte? Sie sind der Vater. Ja, ich bin der... Uh, anyway. Ja. Jetzt bin ich ein bisschen länger hier, weil ich... Ja, anyway. ja, aber normalerweise bin ich nicht so lange, lange an verschiedenen Plätzen. Für mich ist das hier im Augenblick ist die Ruhe vorm Sturm. Gibt es den Ausdruck, ne? Ruhe vorm Sturm. Ja, wenn ich jetzt hier den Platz verlasse, dann bin ich wieder im Sturm. Dann bin ich wieder ein paar Tage hier, ein paar Tage da, eine Woche hier, da. Ja. Wenn ich hier ein bisschen mehr Ruhe habe und mich um Dinge kümmern kann, die ich normalerweise nicht erledigen kann woanders. Ja, und ich möchte mich dafür bedanken, dass ihr mir die Möglichkeit gibt das zu tun. Wir hören mal das Bar und das ist Chaitanya Chaitanya. Nicht vergessen, aber... Wir haben noch Zeit. Okay, okay. Ja, wir müssen die andere Brille aufsetzen. Die hast du... Die hast du da... Die ist da gar nicht drin. Ach so. Okay, danke. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 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 Jaya Advaita Chandra
Und wir lesen jetzt gerade, ähm, was ist die, was der Titel ist, das ist mir hier nicht mehr. Titel des Kapitels? Spätestens. Bist du sicher? Oder? Denkst du das? Spätere Spätung von Wortstein. Ah ja, okay. So, dann lesen wir aus dem ersten Kapitel, den 190. Vers. Und der Vers ist nicht bis. Wir haben kein Problem mit dem Text. Ah, kein Problem. Mit der Technik habe ich ein Problem. <lacht> Wenn das nicht mehr so einfach ist und wir abhängig sind von der modernen Technik, dann gibt es immer Probleme. <lacht> Deshalb müssen wir es immer wieder verbessern, immer wieder Upgrades machen und neue Bildschirme und noch besser und noch besser. Anyway, okay. Matu Yonas Dipa Pratma Napadali Chakashana Kadihari Pia Lajame Kimru Purushotama. Ich lese mir jetzt nur die Übersetzung. Dear Lord, let us inform you that no one is more sinful than us, nor is there any offender like us. Even if we wanted to mention our sinful activities, we would immediately become ashamed. And what to speak of giving them up? This verse is from the Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu. This has nectar, nectar in the ocean. 1 to uh, 154 by Shida Rupa Goswami. Patita Pavana He to Tomara Matara, Atma Bai Jagate Patita Nahiara. The two brothers submitted, Dear Lord, you have incarnated to deliver the fallen souls. You should consider that in this world there is none so fallen as us. Chagai Matai Dui Kavide Udhara, Tahan Udari Peshama Nahila Tomara. You have delivered the two brothers Chagai and Madai. But to deliver them, you did not have to exert yourself very much. Brahmana Chati Tara Navadvi Pagara Nachi Seva Nahikare Nahi Nichega Kurpara. The brothers Chagai and Madai belonged to the Brahmana caste, and their residence was in the holy place of Navadvipa. They never served low-class persons, nor were they instruments to abominable activities. Save shado shatara haya papachara papara shida hena vipa seitomara Chagai Madai had but one fault. They were addicted to sinful activity. However, Volumes of sinful activities can be burned to ashes simply by a dim reflection of the chanting of your holy name. So that's the purpose of Shri Chidaruba Goswami and Sanatan Goswami presented themselves as being lower than the two brothers, Jagai and Madai, who were delivered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Rupa and Sanatan compared themselves to Jagai and Madai, They found themselves inferior because the Lord had no trouble in delivering two drunken brothers. This was so because despite the fact that they were addicted to sinful activity, 
in other ways, their life was brilliant. They belonged to the Brahmana caste of Navadvip, and such Brahmanas were pious by nature. Although they had been addicted to some sinful activities due to bad association, those unwanted things could vanish simply because of the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. <coughs> Another point for Jagai Madai was that, as members of a Brahmana family, they did not accept service under anyone. The Shastra strictly forbid a Brahmana to accept service under anyone. The idea is that by accepting a master, one accepts the occupation of a dog. In other words, a dog cannot thrive without having master, having a master. And for the sake of pleasing the master, dogs offend many people. They bark at innocent people just to please the master. Similarly, when one is a servant, he has to perform abominable activities according to the orders of the master. Therefore, when Davida Kas and Sakyamalika compared their position to that of Jagai and Madai, they found Jagai and Madai's position far better. Jagai and Madai never accepted the position of serving a low-class person, nor were they forced to execute abominable activities under the order of low class of a low class master. Jagai Madai chanted the name of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by way of blasphemy, but because they simply chanted his name, they immediately became free from the reactions of sinful activities. Thus later they were saved. This is an interesting point. No? What was the verse again? Jagai Madai had but one fault that were addicted to sinful activities. However, volumes of sinful activity can be burned to ashes simply by a dim reflection of the chanting of your holy name. Um, the, at the end of what we, the Nectar of Yoshi, you know, Rupa Goswami explains that uh, you know, after mentioning the ten offenses, you know, that we, you know, we always hear the ten offenses, uh, you know, after mentioning the ten offenses, he said, anyway, you know, the, the way to continue is to simply go on chanting. Continue chanting. Of course, when you commit offenses, the problem is that the, that the, the process, you know, or the advancement could become slowed down. You know? But nevertheless, you should not give under any, up any, under any circumstances the chanting of the Holy Name. And there's another point that he, he uh, um, devotee mentioned in his question, you know, that, um, that uh, 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 you know, as neophytes, you commit so many mistakes and become discouraged and all that. Uh, but, um, what point now? Um, Still have a problem with my brain. <laughs> so, any questions regarding this? This is a very important purpose here. No, a very important verse. And if even chanting, you know, uh, inattentive or offensively, uh, you also become, you also become, you benefit also. Just like sometimes, you know, when we used to go, well, in the beginning, we used to go on, on Hainam you know, in Hamburg, you know, the first temple in Germany, <coughs> and, and sa Saturday night we used to go to the Reeperbahn, you know, Reeperbahn, nightclub area, you know, you heard about it? Very dangerous place, and many drunken, and, and many, you know, it's on the side of the harbor, Hamburg Hafen, and many, uh, 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 I say, Marines and I say, Zeeland, is it what it is? Seafarers, no? something. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, only those people would put tattoos and all that. <laughs> and people who had been in jail, you know, they normally used a lot of tattoos and all that. Now it's become a fat, well, it's beside, <laughs> that's useless aside. 
Yeah. Anyway, so we used to, used to do high nam in those places. Yeah. And uh, uh, many times people became very, very offensive. You know, they threw cigarettes at us. You know, kind of, you know, or, or, or we, uh, anyway, yeah. And uh, still, you know, they sometimes say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know. <laughs> and according to this verse here, you know, they also became benefited. It's mentioned here, Jagan Madai, you know, blaspheming Aida, Stakpur, uh, uh, and uh, Nityananda. You know, and, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you know, or Krishna, the holy name, they were blaspheming, but still they benefited. You know, not as expected, uh, at the maximum, but still they began benefiting. You know, just like I mentioned many times, you know, uh, 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 all these neighbors here, you know, every day they hear, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, ching, 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 ching. <laughs> Right? Every day you <laughs> look And this transcendental sound vibration penetrates all the coverings. Yeah. All the coverings. Yeah. Somebody might not understand or might think even this is weird, this is crazy, these people are always sending always singing the same song. Yeah. <laughs> they change the melodies, but always the same song. Yeah. Yeah. They might sing so many things, but they The sound vibration penetrates them and gets to the heart. Pure tries starts start purifying the heart of people. Even if they don't understand. It's such a mercy. And then it says here, no, they they do um Rupa Goswami, Sadatha Goswami had been servants. No? of the Muslim government, the Muslim king. And it's mentioned here that Jagaya Madai no, were actually more fortunate. They were born in a very high class Brahmin family. They became degraded, but they never made themselves dependent on others. No? That is one of the qualities of a Brahmin also. No? A Brahmana should always stay independent. Because once you have to once you get money for your work or something, you become dependent, and you have to compromise. You cannot say things as they are, really. Uh, you know, otherwise, you lose your job. You know? It's like we can see nowadays. You know? Sometimes the Buddhists have jobs, and they have to be too quiet. You know? And they are, are you vegetarian? Yeah. Then you know, try to not say more, do not get entangled. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> no? And why you are vegetarian? Because I like it. <laughs> Hare Krishna. No, Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> this is when you become any, when you can depend on you. You are compromised. Yeah, that's why it says a Brahmana should never accept the job. They should uh, uh, simply just simply comply with their function as Brahmins. Study and teach. Give, co co I say, uh, uh, advice. Yeah? They should give advice. And the Vedic cultures were very common. That people would come and ask the Brahmins for advice. Like it's mentioned in Chaitanya Chaitanya, that when Rupa Goswami and Sanata Goswami were living in Vandavan, yeah? The, and they were they were going around <coughs> preaching. Not so many people asked them all kinds of questions, not just spiritual questions. Uh, and they gave advice, freely gave advice. You know, nowadays when you need some important advice, you have to pay for it. You go to the doctor, you have to pay. You have, you need some legal help. You 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 have to have a lawyer, and they're very expensive also. Yeah. And these are normally bra functions of brahmanas. Uh, and they can say things as they are. Uh, and that's why no, they were supposed to be very, very learned uh, brahmanas. Yeah. Persons who knew the brahman, the spiritual, the nature. Yeah. 
That's what Brahman means. Then the Kshatriyas were also supposed to not depend on anybody. They were the supreme controllers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they had the, a great responsibility. What was the responsibility of Kshatriyas? To protect everybody else. See that everyone was protected uh, uh, properly. And then where he was functioning, no? in his uh, no? complying, no? fulfilling his duties, his, his responsibility. Yeah. And the Vaishyas were also independent. Not so independent because they had to maintain the rest. No? They would pay taxes to the king. They were supposed to produce all the necessities and not deal on the black market. Black market not produce things that were not allowed. <coughs> they were supposed to give donations no, to the saintly persons, the brahmacharis and the sannyasis like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and the only ones who were dependent, I mean, the only one sounds like there were few, just a few. No, actually, the, the, the bigger part of society were shooters. Right? And they were supposed to be dependent. They were servants. And that was not something artificial. Not, not like nowadays, you know, the, the, the shooters they make their manifestations all the time to get more money and, and fight for their rights and this. And, yeah. They were satisfied with what they were given, and people would maintain their, their workers. I heard that Pavel even said that the shooters should not receive money, because when they get money, they spend it on all kinds of sinful activities. <laughs> yeah. that they should be given only and their necessities, finished. And normally, I saw this in India. So, no, when we were traveling, you know, doing our, our tour through the south of India, you know, many times we were invited to the house, to the Krihastas at home, you know, the Indians, and uh, they had a lot of servants. In India it's very common that people, who, who, yeah, they have servants. They have a chauffeur, how do you say chauffeur? Yeah. They have somebody who, who looks at you know, the security at the door and all that. And they have servants living in the same house, yeah, who are you know, doing all the cleaning there and everything, serving whatever is necessary to do. And Prabhupada explained once that when these servants are properly trained and everything, and they're actually doing what they're supposed to do, then they can trust them also. They will not take advantage when the master is sick or something to rob from him or something. They actually take care. Because they have faith. Huh? Yeah, and because the masters were not exploiters, they were actually taking care of them nicely. Anyway, so, uh, uh, no, so Ruga Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, they were lamenting you know, before, when they met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, we have really fallen down. We are even lower than Jagai Madai, uh, who never accepted any service and uh, never became dependent on low class people. Uh, whereas we, you know, we, we were servants of the Muslim, uh, uh, um, how do you say, uh, yeah, the Lord or something. Interesting, no? Hare Krishna, it's, it's nine and two minutes. <laughs> That's the end of the class. Anyway, any, any questions, any comments? Yeah, but in English, Deutsch? Uh, Deutsch. Uh,
Der macht auch Fortschritt. Aber der Fortschritt ist, ist, ist wie sagt man, ist, äh, wie sagt man das? Ähm, ein Wort, mir fällt das Wort. Der Fortschritt ist. Ja. Zinsig. Ha? Zinsig. Ja, allmählich. Wie sagt man das? Ja. Slowly. Sehr langsam. Ja, ist langsam. Well, you are actually. Uh, uh, I say. A, a, that's why Sanatana Rupa Goswami mentions and the six principles to advance quickly. Utsaha. No, Utsaha means you have to be enthusiastic. Yes, I will do it. Don't worry, Guru Maharaj, I'll take care of this. No matter what. <laughs> yeah. Not like Parvati gave an example, no? he said that Guru Maharaj asked a servant for a glass of milk. No? The one was asking? Yeah, glass of water. Yeah, glass of water. Yeah, glass, of water. Yeah, glass of water. And the disciples speculated, say, what water? Better I bring him a glass of milk. Yeah. <laughs> no, water, water, water! So we have so many nice things to do for Srila Prabhupada in this movement. Yeah. And we should do it enthusiastically. There has to be determination. Enthusiasm comes from determination. Yes, I will do it. I chant my rounds. And I make, I organize my whole day in such a way that I chant my 16 rounds. Yes. C or C, sage I mean. Ja und ja. <laughs> and to chant nicely is to chant them early in the morning. Huh? So früh wie möglich. So früh wie möglich. Ha? Das hängt von deiner, von deiner, wie sagt man, deiner Entschlossenheit ab, von der Chantis. Und wenn du morgens zu so müde bist zum Chanten, dann leg dich früher hin abends. Was? Ich habe das schon oft erwähnt. Swavas. Swavas ist der Tempelpräsident von Los Angeles in Amerika. Der ist schon, der war früher ein großer Sanketan, Devoni, dann wurde, hat er mehr und mehr Verantwortung übergeben. Jetzt ist er schon seit vielen Jahren der Tempelpräsident in, in Los Angeles. Ein sehr verantwortungsvoller Devoni geworden. Der hat mal erzählt, dass die, als der Sanketan Devoni war, da haben sie mit Prabhupada gesprochen. Und er hat zwar war es Prabhupada gefragt, äh, wie, Prabhupada, wie können wir mehr Bücher verteilen? Und dann, dann ne, heißt es, als Prabhupada diese Frage hörte, blieb er erst mal still. Hat er eine Zeit lang überlegt. Und dann hat sich der Prabhupada gesagt, chant your 16 rounds without interrupting. interrupting. Ja. Wie wir das praktisch, ne, was das praktisch bedeutet, ist unsere Intelligenz überlassen. Ne? Ne, zum Beispiel haben wir hier die Zeit nach dem Mangel Arti, ne, nach Tulsi Puja und so weiter. Ne, habt ihr wie viel? Zwei Stunden? Ja. Zwei Stunden Zeit zum Schauen. Wenn da jemand sagt, oh Prabhupada, no, oh Prabhupada, mir fehlen noch Runden heute. Ne? Ich habe heute Morgen, ja. wieso? Das ist zwei Stunden Zeit zum Schauen. Man sollte seine Runden schaffen in den zwei Stunden. Wenn man mehr, mehr Zeit braucht zum Schauen, dann stimmt da irgendwas nicht. <lacht> Was denkst du? Ha? Bist du davon überzeugt? <lacht> ich kann ja nicht. Was denkst du? Ja, für mich ist die beste Zeit vor Mangalati. Schein ist ja eine Runde vor Mangalati. <lacht> Ja. Da folgst du einem Beispiel, ne? Ja, ich scheint auch meine Runde vor Mangalati. Das ist die beste Zeit. 
Und wenn man, und wenn man, ne, wenn man das nicht morgen, wenn man so früh nicht aufstellt, muss man sich einfach früher, früher hinlegen abends. Weil wir haben eine innere Uhr. Ne? Aber eine bestimmte Zahl von Stunden um ist, dann wachen wir auf. Das ist einfach eine ganz natürlich. Das ist äh, eine praktische Sache. Das, das, ich will nicht sagen, dass ihr das alle machen müsst. Na, aber ihr solltet euer, eure Zeit so organisieren, dass ihr das so gut wie möglich eure Runden schaltet. Das, das Wichtigste, was wir machen während des Tages, ist die Runden zu schalten. Was denkst du? Ja, der, Channel, der steht auch ganz früh morgens auf, unser Temple Commander. Ja? Weil er braucht viel ne, Kraft für seinen Service. Er braucht viel Kraft, weil so viele Details und so viele Abwägungen, so viele Dinge, die er, die er machen muss und für dir sorgen kann, für dir verantwortlich ist. Ja? Aber wenn man, da, wenn man da nicht morgens seine Runden früh schaltet, ist man abends immer total geliefert. Ne? Ja. Oder? Ja. Weil wir arbeiten mit anderer Kraft. Wir arbeiten mit spiritueller Kraft als die Wunde. Ja. Nicht mit materieller Kraft. Ja, noch ein Kommentar. Seine Frau chantet alle 16 Runden in anderthalb Stunden. Ist das normal oder zu schnell? Sehr gut. Ja, gut. <lacht> er wird weiter sagen. Folge ihrem Beispiel. <lacht> du bist sehr vom Glück begünstigt, dass du da jetzt so eine gute Frau hast. <lacht> yeah. Die Frau sollte normalerweise die Inspiration des Mannes sein. Ja, deshalb wurden von den Kshatres erlaubt, mehrere Frauen zu haben. Weil die brauchen viel Inspiration. <lacht> Brauber hat auch mal gesagt, dass hinter, hinter jedem Cäsar eine Kleopatra steht. <lacht> ha? Ah, jetzt hast du gerade fertig übersetzt, ja? Ja, ja, okay. Ja. Very quickly, so as if they are going in some meditation in Krishna. Ah, what, what is it, Prabhupada? Huh? What is it? Why it happens? Why what? Why devotees are chanting uh, so oft, so often, uh, just like, you know, just like, what you call it, one line, Krishna, what is it? <laughs> Why it happens this way? What, what it means? How is it chanting or is something else? Everyone has a style of chanting. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing is that you, you speak every, you pronounce every word of the mantra. Some people, they have a style that takes a long, longer time. You know, in others, they, they have the facility to concentrate, concentrate better and hear, even though they speak fast, they hear every word. Yes. There's something that comes. Yeah. Everyone has his style. The most important thing is that you hear properly. And the morning is the best time because it's the mode of goodness. The mode of morning. Yeah, goodness. Yeah, it's Brahma Mahota also. Yeah. That multiplies it, the energy, spiritual energy. That's why Prabhupada told us that I mentioned that before. Prabhupada said that amongst all our activities, Mangal Arti is the most important. Mangal Arti. Every morning. Get up, do your mangalati. And the house.
householders, they should have an altar, they have some deities at home, and they also have, should also have their program. Otherwise, what's the use? It's just a waste of time and energy. Huh? What, what I did, did I say? That you were satisfied? Me? Yeah. I said yes. And what, what, what did I say? Uh, you said that uh, everybody has his style of change. Yeah, everyone has his style. Yeah. Okay, Shri Prabhupada, okay. Go, 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 Ich freue mich auf das Fest heute. Für heute auch. Ja. Ja.